All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 523 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. Over here, we talk about George Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. And we're going to continue this week with more Atlanta Falcons stuff because we just got word what the salary cap is going to be um, for the NFL, and it is increasing by like $16 million. What does that mean for the Atlanta Falcons? Well, if you've seen the title of this uh, episode, we're going to have about 56, almost $56.5 million in cap space. This is, you know, really, really good. We are the second highest behind the Bears, and it gives us a lot of flexibility of doing things according to what uh, what it takes to build a football team. So we're going to talk about this, um, pretty much give us give out different avenues and different uh, – directions this team could go with what's going on here and uh also give you my thoughts and opinions on all of this in general so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode if this is your first time here welcome i can be found on youtube and rumble i'm also on anchor stitcher spotify apple and google podcast so you can listen to the podcast at your leisure this show is also brought to you by uh bet us you know you can click that link down in the description Click that link to put a uh, hundred dollars down, get a hundred and twenty-five percent bet book bonus. And you can put wages on the Super Bowl that'll be up in a couple of weeks, some NBA games, MMA, esports, uh, all that stuff that's going on. College basketball is going on right now. You know, just put some money down and figure out what team you feel that's gonna be better against another and double, triple, quadruple your money. It, it it's just a good it's just a good time to do that. And also it helps the channel. So hopefully you guys will check all of that out. And uh, we'll just uh, go from there. Now, we all knew that this was going to be a big deal for the Atlanta Falcons going through this whole ordeal once Coach Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot came into the front office. And what happened with this whole situation when it comes to uh, rebuilding a team? Uh, Quite frankly, we had a lot of cap issues with the whole situation with Julio Jones, Matt Ryan. Uh, we had a couple of other players, um, even before, uh, you know, this regime took over with Desmond Trufant. We we had a lot of cap issues. And um, at one point, we were definitely absolutely upside down. With the new regime coming in and they made a lot of changes, they traded Julio Jones, they, got, they traded Matt Ryan. Um, you know, they tried to remove move some people to, to free up some cap space, got a lot of guys on one-year deals. And to be honest, when you look at what's happened, they've been fairly successful overall with this uh, whole situation when we talk about rebuild or whatever the case may be. Winning seven games in the first two seasons together, uh, you can make a case with this team in the first year with no literally very good, not even going to say production, but very good talent at the wide receiver position. We shouldn't have won that many games with Matt Ryan throwing the football to pretty much just basically like Kyle Pitts and and – Cordell Patterson, you know, Cordell Patterson, to me, I still feel is a wide receiver, but you really didn't have anybody, you know, to throw to for the most part. Second year around, we get Drake London, we get Marcus Mariota, we also get um, a couple other pieces when it comes to the running game. Even though with all of that, we were still protected to a lot of experts to win maybe two to three games, end up winning seven once again. So, we, I think we have a really good coach because he's doing a lot with less. Now you're going to have a situation where with $56 million, $56.4 million, $56.5 million in cap space, we're going to be able to do a lot. So with all of this going on, we can pretty much sign anybody who we want. We're basically trying to find a way to outbid, you know, maybe four, maybe five other teams to get top players. Because if you look at the cap space according to overthecap.com, you have the Bears, the Falcons, the the Giants, and the Bengals, which that is amazing that the Bengals have that much cap space with the talent that they have. That team's going to be a problem for a good, for a good while because, I mean, they made it to two AFC championship games, and you still have $43 million that you can spend. And what makes it even more phenomenal, they only have $500,000 million, I mean, $500, in cap money. So I'm kind of scared of the Bengals. But when you're looking at these teams that are actually competing, even when you go down to possibly to the Texans and Patriots, you may go to the Seahawks. Once you get to those, you know, first six, seven, eight teams, we're probably competing for talent when it comes to that. With us having the money and and, and the things that we can do, we just have to be the more attractive place to be. 
And I think bringing in a defensive coordinator, knowing what type of offense we can run with Arthur Smith, the type of GM we have with Terry Fontenot, I think we have a very attractive place to be. I mean, there's already rumbling saying like guys like Patrick Peterson want to come here. And I'm I'm pretty sure he's not going to cost, you know, a lot to actually bring him here. But when you have guys with that type of respect and stature that may want to come to the school, um, the school, come to this uh, team, you're going to have other guys who may want to play under a Patrick Peterson or play, may want to play under a Grady Jarrett or play with, you know, you know, other guys who are actually shown that they're trying to create a culture here. I'm not sure about the Bears and what type of culture ch- they're trying to build. They're all over the place. The Giants look pretty good. The Bengals look um damn good. The Texans and the Patriots and Seahawks. And so we're in a really good space when we're competing against other teams to get talent here. Um, I think that we're in a very good spot. I mean, I we're really not going to know what's really what till we find out who are actually our free agents when it, uh, when who are actually going to be free agents coming up. It could be some um, cut, um, some salary um, casualties because you have to understand that. We're going to look at the flip side of this. Look at all these teams that are upside down in cap space. You have the Cowboys are seven million over. You have the the Rams that are fourteen over. See now the Rams, it's all, it's finally caught up to the Rams because the Rams have just been signing everybody. Now they're upside down because they've been signing everybody for the past three four years. Now they're upside down. You have uh, teams that has a lot of um, talent like the Dolphins, the Packers. Um, you also have the Bills that are upside down by tw- almost twenty million. The Chargers are upside down by twenty million. Uh, I'm actually surprised that the Jaguars are upside down as well. But you have the Titans, the Buccaneers, and the Saints, the Vikings as well. So you have a lot of teams that actually have a lot of talent that were basically playoff teams. Now probably gonna have to get rid of some guys because of the fact that they just don't have the money. You know, I mean, you got guys. I mean, you look at the Saints. I mean, even though they weren't a playoff team, these guys are almost sixty million dollars in, in 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 over the cap. That is insane. So not only that they lose. You know, um, their GM with, with, I mean, their assistant GM with Terry Fontenot, they end up losing their defensive line coach and is now a defensive coordinator. Uh, I thought that was going to have problems. I thought that was going to get from under those problems when Drew, B- Drew Brees was not um, a part of, you know, the Saints anymore once he retired. There's still $60 million in cap space <laughs> that, 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 are, that are over the cap. So there's a lot of talent that's going to be, be dropped because of the, the issues that a lot of these teams, which are like basically were playoff teams now going to be giving up a lot of talent because they just don't have the money to spend. So just looking at what we have now with $56 million in cap space, you're looking at a lot of teams that are at least $15 million in cap space uh, over the cap space at the very least up to $60 million in cap space. There's a lot of talent that's going to be dropped a lot. I mean, you, you just can't say, Oh, I'm going to get rid of, um, a phone call so let me get back to that you just can't get over the whole situation when it comes to uh you know with just getting rid of okay i'm gonna get rid of this third string person i'm gonna get rid of this lower tip or not you're gonna have to get rid of some guys who are paid you know what i'm saying and some of those players are going to end up on like the falcons or the giants or the Bengals or the bears you know the seahawks the patriots you know these teams that are that are basically not um that are not uh uh strapped or that that are not strapped for top tier talent or not necessarily strapped for paying a lot of people, you know. So with this young team that the Falcons have, the Falcons could really get some veterans in here. We also can get some really good talent that is actually young. And we're you know like a lot of guys that are probably on their rookie deals that you probably can't sign that's on these teams. We probably could be able to bring those guys in, you know. So this is going to be really really interesting to see. I I think that with with what we have with the Falcons is really going to be um, very interesting. This is where the games, this is where the fun is actually going to start. We've been through the first two years where things just wasn't the best. I'm not going to say it was bad because, I mean, we overachieved in both seasons. But um, I think now we're going to be in a situation where it's going to be fun. Watching us get talent to come in here. Watching Coach Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot and um, Coach Ryan Nielsen actually put together a team that actually has really good cap space where we could go on a run and actually do some things, you know. So this is what uh, this is what really is going to be a phenomenal look, you know, for the Falcons. 
You look at the teams now that are in the Super Bowl now. You look at the Chiefs. You look at the Eagles. Now, I will commend the Chiefs. The Chiefs look pretty good with the cap space, but it looks like after they sign players, they're going to be over the cap space by about $800,000. I mean $800, so they're going to have to make some moves as well. The Eagles as well. They're $4 million over, but once they you know get their players signed, and um, the 51 players signed and signed their rookie class, they're possibly going to be over by a million. So they're going to be towing the line a lot. They're going to be able to keep a lot of talent. But then again, you also understand they have $28 million in dead space. So what could they really spend? You know, we have $13 million in dead money. Uh, I don't know when that's going to drop off, probably drop off the next season. And uh, that's going to be, you know, really, really cool to see how that plays out. Because possibly projected next year, um, we're going to be looking good as well when it comes to actual cat space. But it all just depends on who we're going to be spending. I mean, what we're going to be spending it on, you know, because it, it's, it's really going to be uh, to the point where we, the next three, four years, we're going to be in a really good shape to put players together, um, put them together to play against each other, play for each other with a very good salary for a lot of these players. The main thing is we just got to get the right talent to go to be here, to put them here, and actually win some games. Um, I really trust what Coach Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot has been doing. I don't see where any there's any fall off here. I've seen a, um, and I don't really go into the comment section of my uh, YouTube channel too much, but I seen someone say something about Rich McKay is the problem, you know. So I'm like. How Rich McKay is the problem, and they said once we don't, once we get rid of him, we won't go to another. Super Bowl. Rich Rich McKay is the president of player personnel. He doesn't have his hand that deep entrenched into what the roster does. If you want to really, you know, go after somebody, you know, if you if if it was if it was anyone's fault, you go after the GM and the coach, and the assistant GMs and everybody in that front office. Rich McKay is a little bit, he, he does other things that are different. It's not necessarily it's on him, but you can see where some people are reaching to say, it, they're, they're just trying to point the finger because honestly, at this point, you see what Coach Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot are doing. They're, they're bringing personnel in that's actually going to be able to do some things. Where you have a defensive line coach who's going to be a defensive coordinator that's very familiar with Terry Fontenot, know what he's about, know what he's, um, what he expects, and know. And Terry Fontenot understands what, um, Coach Ryan Nielsen, uh, uh, expects. So it's going to be a real mutual situation between those two, and it's going to be really interesting to see how him and Coach Arthur Smith, whatever they know, uh, from each other, or what they're going to get to learn from each other, to actually mesh together to get players in with all of this money in cap money it's going to be really cool to see i think this is a good time to really be positive there's no there, there, right now there's really no negativity or really negative vibes to get in, in this there was it was so easy to talk when we didn't have the cap money when we were paying matt ryan a lot of money when we were when we didn't restructure jake matthews and grady jared and Deion jones when we had a lot of money you know tied up into like seven players it it was it was I mean it was warranted to be negative because we couldn't get out of our own way, but now when you look at what we have here with fifty six million dollars in cap space, when that's going to probably drop down to about fifty one million dollars in cap space once we sign our rookie class. I mean, you we're we're in really good shape, guys. So there's no negative vibes here. If you want to point the finger at somebody, I mean, you, I, I personally feel you just want to be negative at this point. And, you know, I wish you the best, you know, because I, I, I want to see results first. I want to see who we bring in first. I want to see who we draft first before I want to put any negative connotation to anything that we're doing right now. Because right now, what we've seen for the past two years has been a, a transformation from being in cap space hell to actually getting in a really good area of cap space where we have over $50 million to actually do some things. So with the, what we have there is a very positive is a net positive. 
56 million reasons why is a net positive. So let's see what they do, you know, in the coming months until uh, we find out what's actually, you know, a, a, that's going to be an issue. Because right now it's nothing but positive vibes. They turn around and sign guys who we don't like or guys that we know that's not going to pan out. Or if there's guys that we do sign that don't pan out, then I, I'm all, I'm here with you. You know, there's nothing wrong with it at that point because look, man, we need to get some good players here. We're too close to making the playoffs for the last two years that we could easily get like four or five good players that are actually going to be productive and be superstars. And all of a sudden we could be right where the Eagles are. And I really mean that because we've been competitive in every single game for the last two years outside of maybe what the Bengals game. And uh, I remember when we got blown out by Dallas and uh, right behind that, the game after that was the Patriots two years ago. So outside of those three games out of what, when we played 17 out of 34 games, we've been fairly competitive. We're right on the cusp. So let's get these guys in. Let's use this cap money and make things happen and see where we go from there. Cause I think that we could make some real noise in the NFC, you know, de- dead serious, <laughs> you know? So if you like this commentary, hit the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, let me know what you guys think. I think that we're in a really good shape. I think that this is amazing that we're in this situation. Hopefully we'll make things happen with this uh, cap space and uh, really make some noise. I mean, the NFC South is wide open. And in some cases, if you really think about it, outside of possibly the Eagles, I'm looking at who else, maybe the Giants and the 49ers. I I think the NFC is probably wide open as well. We already beat the Falcons. We beat the 49ers one time, and I think that the Giants aren't that good it may get better with their cap space to their $44 million uh, over. I mean, in $44 million under in cap space. So, you know, they could get better as well. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I can be found on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor Stitch, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts. Hopefully you guys will continue to support. I really appreciate it. All the links down in the description if you want to support through BetUS, Cash App, PayPal, any of that stuff. If you want to uh, support, I really, really w- would appreciate it. I will be back here on Wednesday with more content. I want to thank you guys. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys then. You guys take it easy. You guys be blessed. Peace.